the topic that George uh, shared with me for this call today, I really love, and it's, it's along the theme of how striving and effort and trying really get in the way of being affected by the understanding that Sydney Banks shared. So we'll be looking in that direction. And um, I'll just give a brief introduction to George. I'm sure many of you already know him, but for those of you who might not, George is, um, he was described as one of the leading psychologists or the leading psychologist of our time by Colin Wilson. And his work has really pioneered the understanding shared by Sydney Banks into so many different areas of, um, from psychology to uh, corporate areas, to health, to um, addiction. So he's really been a pioneer in bringing this understanding that is so transformative into so many different areas. And so he's also been a mentor. I've completed the Pransky and Associates Mentorship Program and I'm so grateful for the time that I've got to spend with you in person, George, really um, has meant so much to me. So thank you. All right, so uh, where would you like to start, George, with that topic in terms of... Well, I, I was thinking, Rohini, that I wanted to tell a story as a, a, a kind of a foundation for the, com the, uh, the conversation. Uh, I, when I was in La Conner, uh I had this client who was disabled. And uh, she she wanted to know whether she should attend the the sessions, and if she didn't, what would she do? You know, uh, was she going to be bored? Uh, and and I, and I said, I don't I don't know I I don't know uh, if you're gonna if you should attend the sessions. You know, if you attend it, it will. Uh, uh, you can you can attend for free. So, if you want to get in out of the rain, <laughs> you can you can uh, park it yourself uh, over uh, over by the uh, uh, TV monitor, and and uh, that would work. So she didn't attend the first session. And she didn't attend the second one, but then she said, "Well, I I think I'm going to just uh, use it use it as an opportunity to uh, kind of dis, disengage, disengage and um, relax." And that's what she was going to do. So one of the things that I, that really stood out to me is that she got more from the session <laughs> than, than, than just about anybody. And I, I didn't really understand that. It looked like she was lucky, that somehow she was lucky. But she uh, made a point of not paying attention to what was being said. And uh, she did a fine job of that. And, and she ended up uh, very interested and very relaxed. And she said to the person that brought him, uh, brought her, wow, I had no idea that these uh, meetings were so profound and so, so much uh, changed in me. And, 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 and the person that brought her said, what are you, what are you talking about? Because the person that brought her was uh, striving and 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 and, and uh, point uh, pulling out the stops in order to get as much they could as could they could possibly get, and it was very very uh, ironic and and kind of rude that uh, they weren't. Uh, learning a lot because of the striving. So the, the fact that they were trying hard was a variable that uh, miti mitigated uh, how much progress they were 
that they will go, uh, go uh, uh, how much progress they saw. So that was something that was a real wake up call for me because I, I felt like it was uh, only right that people got uh, more according to how much they put into it. So the more they put into it, the more benefit they got. And it was uh, a real uh, wake up call that that wasn't the variable that mattered. What mattered was how receptive they were So, so the fact that they were open and kind of uh, uh, re relaxed and uh, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, just uh, enjoying the moment, and uh, <laughs> that variable kind of. Uh, determine how how well they did in the program well that brought me to the, the realization that um, pe people's uh, frame of mind when they're uh, when they're in in uh, in a relaxed state uh, mattered and it, it reminded me of the research they do uh they did for people who were uh, uh pre preoperative so there were people who were going to have an operation and they did a research study that indicated that the more relaxed they were and the less they had the operation on their mind, the, uh, the better the outcome. And, and that tied into what I was, you know, what I was trying to say about uh, your, the, the state of mind of the person. So they, they uh, had uh, people going into the operation with varying states of mind, and then they, uh, they showed how the state of mind of the person was a, an important variable in how well they recovered from the operation. So their recovery was definitely uh, uh, determined by uh, how you know how 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 well they uh, they uh, how I guess what one way you would say is it definitely affected them that they were freaked out <laughs> by the operation. So all of a sudden. You have people who are freaked out by it, and other people who uh, are relaxed about it. And if you compare them, you'd find that the relaxed people did really well. Now, uh, for myself, I thought, well, uh, if they're if they're tense, uh, there's a lot of uh, problems that otherwise wouldn't be a problem for them. So if they got tense and they got uh, that tension affected their, their body, that would have a big effect on, mm -hmm. on, the, on how they responded to the operation. So I guess you could say that there's uh, a uh, an, an ideal way to um, respond to an operation and the way the people 
uh, responded generally was not the ideal. <laughs> so that, that, that's the, and, and the uh, amount of time it took for them to recover was another variable. So they um, took, took, took a lot of pain and suffering uh, that we would say was not ideal. And, and that's what they called <laughs> recovery from, from their operation. So that's, uh, I, I guess that's a, a, a verbose way of, of saying that uh, the idea that you 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 get more from pe from uh, from people uh, if you put more into them is not necessarily not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. It all depends on how receptive and relaxed the people. Are and frankly, they may not. They may be clueless about what you're trying to, to talk to them about, and they may feel like uh, they're not that interested in what you're talking to the, to them about, and they uh, might even say that uh, you know. It, what you're talking to them about isn't that important. But mat what matters is if their minds are open and, and they're in the moment with you, that, that uh, really matters. So um, that, that was kind of a... Uh, an introduction to what I was uh, what I was trying to say. Thank you. Uh, the the bigger point is uh, if you're not worried about how much you're getting from uh, Rahini's program, that's a good thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> It, 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 you, you can trust that you'll get whatever the benefits are and you don't have to make it happen. That's another, another uh, way of saying the same thing. That, that's a big relief. And it reminds me um, of the workshop that Angus and I did this summer where um, we spoke with Barb Patterson, Amy Johnson, Scott Kelly, and we each had a different topic. And some of the feedback that we got was that there were some people that really wanted to hear, you know, Angus and I speak about relationships. And they were really impacted when Scott was speaking about health because it yeah. wasn't on their mind at all. Yeah. And it was a theme. It wasn't, it was more than one person that, that said, oh, they really got more out of the person that they weren't even wanting to necessarily thinking about listening to. <laughs> and it just speaks exactly to the point that you're sharing that it's, it's seeing that having that open mind is what makes the difference in terms of us being present and in the moment. And, 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 and Rahini, as soon as you make a decision that you want to uh, find out some uh, more information or to, of a top, uh, uh, of, of, on, a, on a particular top, so, so as soon as you uh, make a decision. I'm going to fi find out more about this. You're already predisposing yourself to be uh, less receptive to that particular mm -hmm. subject. So the person that goes in there and doesn't have a clue how, what, the, what um, you know, uh, Rahini's talking about is going to be helpful to them, they're going to be m much more receptive to uh, be being helped. So it's kind of it's kind of ironic, ironic that 
you know, the more, the more you prepare yourself to be receptive, the less <laughs> receptive you are. It is ironic. And oftentimes people will, um, you go, well, well, how do I not want to strive? Like when they're feeling compelled, they want to know more. It's really easy to go to, well, how do I stop striving? But what I hear you saying, George, is it's the, the recognizing how that works and seeing how it gets in the way. That's all that's needed. Is that accurate? Yeah, it, it, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be very accurate. Th that example I gave earlier about the people who, who said, oh, I'm just going to sit in and I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not interested at all, particular in the topic. Uh, they're going to be, have a, a leg up on, um, be on receptivity because they have, they don't have an agenda. They don't, uh, they're not uh, looking to learn something. They're not looking to learn something. And not looking to learn some, something is very good for people's minds. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And what would you say, George, for the people, and I can put myself into that category more in the past, less so now, that are really have a habit of wanting to look for something, wanting more, wanting to see more, thinking that somehow they can, you know, impact their level of consciousness. Like, what would you say to someone that hasn't seen what you're seeing yet? Well, one thing is uh, your level of consciousness doesn't, um, let me see how to say it. The, the level of con the jump in the level of consciousness that you have is um, is going to be uh, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know how to say it uh, oh, let, let me put it put it this the the fact that you want to improve your level of consciousness is not going to benefit you in terms of whether you actually improve it or not. So a person can't, uh, you know, uh, make themselves change their level of consciousness, but a person can, uh, be receptive and maybe even uh, be, be looking in the direction of, gee, it'd be nice if I became a nice person or, or I became a more loving person or, yeah, that would be kind of nice. And uh, that, that, would, that would be a step in the right direction. But in terms of learning something that's going to raise your level of consciousness, that's something that's beyond a, a per person. That would be beyond for me to, uh, to have that uh, intent. Yeah, and it's um, really so freeing to be able to let that go. I remember I was... Um, listening to you speak uh, at a workshop, George, and you were talking about how it doesn't really matter how much we see, there's always gonna be more to see, there's always gonna be things that we don't see, and it doesn't really matter. Like, there's always gonna be that, and I got to see how my striving, I thought I was gonna arrive somewhere. Like, it was so innocent, and I wouldn't yeah. have seen it so clearly at the time, it just became really clear to me that, oh, I am striving, I do want more. And it's just making, it's almost like making understanding a, a material thing that I can have more yes. of. And it's not that. You know, one, one of the things that Sid said is he, he, he made a statement in, in, in the, I think it was the Minis, in the Minnesota uh, conference. He said, that if you have someone who doesn't 
have a clue what you're talking about, they're going to be uh, be on a on a path towards gaining understanding. So actually, is uh, a tremendous benefit to someone to be clueless about what they're trying to uh, about what they're understanding and uh, so at the very least you don't have to know ahead of time what you're going to bet going to get from a particular uh, seminar so at the very least that's not a requirement so a lot of times the benefits that people get from a seminar are very much unrelated to what they were hoping to get. Uh, so that's really good news because it, it, it means that we're not, it, I, I don't know if this is the right word, that we're not, we don't have to be pro programmed to get a benefit. It's like getting a, a tan. You know, if you put yourself put yourself in the sun, you're going to get a tan. See that, that that's the preparation for getting a tan is <laughs> you put your put your body in the sun. You're going to get a tan. So yeah, the the freedom and how effortless it is. You know, the yeah. freedom and there we can really take all of those um, to do's off our mind. And, and what I see more and more is that, you know, the invisible to do's or the invisible striving just gets more visible. So I can be like, Oh, I don't even need to do that. Yeah. And it's, that's a light, a lighter way to live life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I see we have one person with their hand raised already. Are you okay to start with some questions, George? Oh, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. great. So um, I'll just remind everyone, the way that I'm <clears throat> calling on people for their questions is if you raise your hand. So if you click the participants button and then the raise hand button, I'll see that you've got your hand raised. And I'm gonna go to uh, Yale. Let me unmute you. I'm having trouble. Can you unmute yourself, Gail? Because it's not working for me. Thank you. Hi. Uh, wow. Um, hi, George. Hello. Uh, it's nice to see you. Um, uh, I'm hearing what you're saying. It sounds very. Uh, it sounds very simple. And and it, and and I, it resonates with me. But what you're really saying is, in order to to learn this understanding or any spiritual understanding, you really have to do nothing. Like there's nothing. There's nothing to do. You have to just um, become quiet and. And, and be present and kind of wait or not wait for something to happen or, or just be? Well, here's the thing. What you just said to do uh, is not nothing because just bringing your attention to the moment and allowing yourself to be uh, receptive is not nothing. That's very profound. There's a lot of people, for example, that couldn't do that because they, of their agenda that they have. They would be incapable of doing that because of the agenda that they have. So for those people, uh, do, doing nothing is a, um, yeah, it is very uh, challenging. 
you know so you you make lot you make light of it uh when you say well yeah you just have to work, do nothing well uh uh let me let me say let me say it differently. Yeah, the 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 uh, it takes a lot to do nothing. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, so most people who would who would were saying, "Well, I'm not doing anything." They're doing a lot. They just don't. Appreciate it. They don't appreciate it. They they feel like I'm 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 not do anything, and and that's what I'm up to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like me, when I'm uh, talking to people, I don't feel like I'm uh, contributing much or. Uh, uh, you know, uh, do, doing doing anything important. So I don't feel like I'm not doing the important. But I do I do understand that do, doing something important doesn't require a person to, to you know a person doesn't have to apply themselves to to, to do to do do to do nothing. So it, uh, I, 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 I it, it, as a matter of fact, I feel like the more you think you're doing, the less you're actually doing. Because when we're uh, in, in, in the moment, uh, we, we are, we have the receptivity. Uh, that that we're looking for. So it's 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 a, a paradox, you could say, that uh, we we don't feel like we're doing anything, but that's why we're doing something. <laughs> I guess you know that's uh, I don't know if that makes sense or not. Uh. It's funny because I, I, I want, I, can I, um, something, it rang a bell and I started cracking up while you said it because you said when we think, we think we're doing a lot, we're not really doing a lot. Yeah. But when we're in a feeling, so that's when things happen because when we think we're doing, we think we're doing, we're actually thinking about a lot of things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. yes. And we're not really doing. That's how my life used to be. It was a lot of thinking, and yeah. and not a lot happened. Um, <laughs> that's that's true. That's my true. life is very different today. My life is very different today. So uh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. That was well. That was beautifully you. said. I'll tell you. That was uh, that was beautifully said. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for your question. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next person we'll go to is uh, Andrea and Lee. Let me unmute you. Hi, Andrea and Lee. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Hi. good to see you. Nice Hi. to see you. Um, Hi, so, George. <laughs> Hi, George. So, um, <clears throat> again, I'm, I'm, still <laughs> I'm still sort of processing the last question because that was really good. And Which I have a big me too, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, my question was actually about the doing nothing in that sense. In the fact, what, do you, what are your feelings? Because I, I love the way you say about, you know, it doesn't even matter what decision you make because it's mm -hmm. almost like we're, it's completely out of our hands. So my question may have just answered itself. What do you, do you believe in manifesting? Mm. Um. I, 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 that's a very, a very uh, pr pr profound uh, question. So I want to do do it justice. So I'm going to have to take a minute to uh, to, to to reflect on this. Uh, I'll drink my tea. <laughs> see, 
I think that I think that every human being is on, on a path. Right. They everybody's have their path, and uh, what you what you manifest or or, or what you're uh, uh, about uh, determined where you are in your path. So uh, a person that's, let's say, very uh, striving a lot and they're uh, insecure about how they're doing it as a person, um, they would be on, on a path uh, and uh, what, six months of more, uh, six months from that time, they would say, gee, I was on this path here and uh, I don't know why I was, you know, making things difficult and so forth. Mm -hmm. So they would have a learning curve. Mm -hmm. Right. And it depends on, on, on how sharp their learning curve is. So I could, I could look at a lot of uh, decisions that I made and I, a lot of uh, behaviors that I, that I did. And I, could, I would roll my eyes at, at those decisions and say, oh my God, at the time I did, did that, I thought it was a great idea and then later, uh, it didn't turn to be turn out to be such a good such a good idea. Now, in the context of that, in the context of that, what you and I are about and what we're what we're up to isn't worth a hill of, be hill of beans. Mm -hmm. In the context of that deeper discussion of purpose. And and uh, what are we what are we about and so forth? Uh, it's it, it, it it's very humbling for us to look at uh, how how much we thought we knew what it was all about, mm -hmm. and how much we didn't didn't have a clue what it was about. And you have to mm -hmm. act, you have to suspect that that's true for me right now. You have to be suspect that it's gonna, if, if it's true for, you know, for uh, everybody, it's gonna be true for me right now. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel like I don't, I'm not um, uh, burdened with my fate, right? You know, I feel like I'm. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. Mm. If I'm on the path, that's all that matters. Huh. If I'm on the path, that's all that matters. And where I am on the path doesn't that ma matter? And 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 that's what makes me feel like there's nothing at stake in my life. Right. Right, right. Or to put it differently, it makes me feel like I'm playing on the house's money. Mm. Right. You know, that I'm playing on the house, <laughs> on the house's money. So if, if I take, make a bet and it doesn't work out, it, it's all right, but it's the, it's the house's money. Yeah. So when you say on the path, what, um, what do you mean by that? On the path. So when would you be off the path? I don't think you would. Ultimately, be off the path because you would. You would always be. Uh, uh, how would, I, how would I say it? 
you always will be <laughs> on the path to s somewhere. Right. Yeah. E even if you were completely lost, if you've <laughs> lost your way, uh, you're gonna lose your way in a very, you know, in a, in a, de in a deliberate way. Mm -hmm. So everybody feels like they're uh, on the path, but there's certain things that they have to accomplish right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why, uh, like I, I was working with um, uh, uh, criminals and the, and and they were talking about well if I only uh, you know knew this what you were talking about it would be so and and to them there were a lot of uh, roadblocks and a lot of problems that they uh, had had to deal with. Mm -hmm. Uh, that were built into their path in life. Mm -hmm. So they would say, "But, but for these things, I'd be, I'd be doing a lot, a lot better." Mm -hmm. But I have to deal with, with the, the, these things. And then, uh, when they, when they saw that they were, uh, uh, that their path changed mm -hmm. that they became let's say more high-minded and more generous mm -hmm. they would say well I, I i i used to be on this path and now i'm on on that path mm -hmm. yeah right. and that's what happens to you and me when we raise our level of understanding uh, we, we, we change our fate. Right. Our right. level of, yeah, yeah. Our, level, our, our, our level of understanding is our fate. That's the fate that we're, okay. right. that we're living. And as soon as we change our level of understanding, we change, literally change our fate. Oh, I heard that. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, you. appreciate your question. All right. So next, I'm going to go to uh, Sarah. Let me unmute you, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Me, Sarah. Yeah. Um, did you have your hand? Yes, you, Sarah. There you okay, go. Okay. Cool. Hi. Hey. Um. Hi, George. Oh, hi. Um, I am really looking forward to meeting you in person soon. I'm coming to the Soul Centered Series with Rohini. And, oh, uh, good. I'm so happy that you're doing that. Oh, my God, me too. That in and of itself, this conversation is really hitting home um, because of how I ended up being able to come is illustrating exactly what you're talking about. And I guess I might have a question. The last, um, the last things you said might have answered it, but I, I'm just going to talk through what I was sure. really yes. the feeling and see if it if it evolves. So recently, I had this pretty interesting shift in understanding this concept around manifestation and striving and now i feel like i just got i'm on a raft in the middle of the ocean not knowing how to do things because mm -hmm. <laughs> all the things i thought i was doing before yeah um seemed to be working but really weren't so let me let me get, be a little bit more specific I have goals and dreams and wants, and I used to do a lot to try to get those things accomplished. Right. Yeah, and, and once in a while, that would result in something being accomplished. And so therefore, I would correlate the things that I did equaling the, 
the goal, right? Uh, what I'm seeing now is that that was completely irrelevant and, and this conversation around being on the path or moving in the right direction is, is more like what, what was actually going on and that all of the striving had nothing to do with it. Yeah. So um, I kind of like graduated from that level of understanding. And then I was at this point where like, what's the point of having any goal and a little bit of apathy Yeah. <laughs> and not moving anywhere there either, because nothing I'm going to be able to do is going to get me where I want to go. And so recently I realized, well, if I don't believe that it's possible, I almost can't afford to dream about it because I was afraid of being disappointed in, in it for the thing not to come about. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah, okay. you are. Yeah. Um, and I found out that a lot of that had to do with whether I was able to envision myself affording it or not. So I was having a really hard time wanting, like fully with my whole self wanting to come to the Soul Centered Series, for example, because I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get past the roadblock of, of um, it not being possible because of money to allow myself to fully want it. And this is why I think this conversation that you just um, kind of walked us through on manifestation is really interesting. Now, I, that was going on. I couldn't really let myself believe it. And then I had this I almost had like a mystical night of dreams. I told Rohini about this, where I was shown all these possibilities and almost as if I, I didn't believe the money part of it was true in a limit, limiting way anymore. It was like in my dreams, once I was, um, my mind wasn't so gripped on that. I could see, I could see all these different ways in which something could be possible, whether I believed I could afford it or not, or whether I believed I deserved it or not, or whether whatever limiting possibility. And I, um, I'm getting a little like, emotional about talking about it because it was so profound I, and it was really an indication of this a deeper navigation system mm -hmm. that kept me on the path whether I wanted to like eject myself off of it or not because of my ideas of worthiness and not, it didn't matter it didn't even matter mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm still like not quite sure how all of this is happening and feeling just like incredibly grateful for the opportunities that I've been able to have the opportunity to come. And um, I, I uh, that's kind of a new experience for me. And I wonder if you can, maybe I just want to hear a little bit of uh, a story from you or something about, about that kind of experience being something I can really trust. Well, let, let me just uh, reflect for a minute on that. Uh, I mean, th th this is going to take the discussion uh, in a little bit of a d different direction. Uh, but you have to ask yourself, if you, if you have a per person and and they uh, have dreams, and they have, uh, you know, things that they would, that would be a real gift for them. Uh, it, they're going to, they're going to either live in the world of dreams or they're going to live uh, 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 in a world of a dream. See, they're either 
going to live a world of dreams or they're going to be they're going to be attached to their dream they, they're going to manifest their dream now there's no there's no question that uh, there's a uh, what we all want for, for ourselves is to live in a world of dreams. That's what everybody wants for themselves. And the reason that they, they don't find that world is because they, they're attached to a specific dream. So that's why if you get a young ch child, uh, they'll live a world of dreams and a world of fantasy. And like Sidney Banks, when we when we uh, took took him took him to our house in Oakland, he was in a world of dreams. He he couldn't believe how beautiful the house was, and and he just we were embarrassed that we didn't appreciate our, our house more as soon as we talked to him. We said, oh my God, I hope. But he was trans, able to trend, transcend to a world of dreams. And, that, and that's what everybody, everybody wants for themselves. So that's the other world that uh, you and I can can live in. Like one of the things that I realized, what Linda and I realized together is we um, we don't know what life uh, has in in store to us has in store for us. Okay. And that freezes us. That frees us. Mm -hmm. That's what's in the offering for all of us. So in a way, in a way, we are all capable of, hate, of living in an impersonal life where we don't take our particular life and our story personally. And that's what we'd like to, 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 to introduce all, all of you to when we uh, go to uh, Los Angeles. A world where uh, the fact that the, you're dreaming is more important than what you're dreaming about. I don't know if that makes if that makes any sense or not. If it, if it doesn't, I'll just say I was kidding. <laughs> I'll go, go back to the drawing board on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you're po you're pointing me in the right direction. I think, absolutely. Yeah, I don't need to know anything more than that. Actually, yeah. Because then I'm just left with this feeling of gratitude. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. That's exactly right. You're, and, you, and you're living in the unknown, which is a very fascinating place to, to uh, visit. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's just so profound, George. I just want to really just sit with what you've said about living an impersonal life. Yeah. Realizing, awakening to the fact we're dreaming and not worrying about the content of the dream. And, and, and Rahini, I feel like this is, the, this is the contribution that Blinder and I can make to this soul-centered uh, Soul, soul centered uh, s series. Uh, I feel like that's what we're up to. 
in more of an impersonal life, mm -hmm. more respect for an impersonal life. Yeah, I can feel the depth and the freedom of it yeah. there, and that it's it's kind of like Yale's question that um, at the beginning. It's it's about doing less, not doing more. Yeah, you know, up to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you if yeah. if you as a person see seeing what's in the offering uh, that's profound yeah even see what's in the offering that's profound absolutely yeah and i can feel it here um so laurel you have your hand raised let me go to laurel you might remember laurel hi laurel hi rohini hello Hello, George. So Hello. happy to be connected with you again. So um, I'm also endeavoring to um, digest at a deeper level what you're saying. So let me just share where I am in this moment. I am preparing to give a presentation of the work I am most passionate about, which I call word magic. I enjoyed some time and space in the impersonal place where the circumstances of my life were completely irrelevant to me because mm -hmm. I was in that expanded heart space. The fact that I had whatever my particular challenges were financially and otherwise were irrelevant to me because in that expansive space, I know that moment by moment, my needs will be met mm -hmm. and, and taken care of. And it is the most divine and delicious place to be in. And my capacity to be present uh, with everyone I encounter and my, ex my open heart and the love that just pours through and, and, and the, the joy and even sometimes the wisdom um, feel wonderful. And then the presentation was behind me and it was like I kind of tumbled back into the personal self, which is a very uncomfortable tight yeah. squeeze. And I, with my work, Word Magic, I, I look at even how the alphabet reflects it, like there's two eyes in, on our head and two eyes in the alphabet. One is where the, uh, the head and the body are separate and I feel very small. And the other is the capital potential where I'm standing as a bridge between heaven and earth. And so when I fall out of, you know, into the fragmented state, the world looks very different to me. So the passion I've had for this um, for this understanding about how puns and the symbols of the alphabet reflect cultural conditioning and higher consciousness, one or the other, um, the passion and desire to be able to share it more fully in the world is a really strong passion that I have. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten very close in the past, and at the moment, it feels like it's back on my shoulders where I have to do more to become more visible in the world with this work. So whereas the, the close brushes with success that I've had in the past were not of my own doing, um, they, are, they came and they went. And now it's like, I feel like the necessity is for me to become more proactive mm -hmm. and, and do more of the doing, holding that passion aloft. And I am probably the same age as you, close to it. So I, I think about my mortality. Mm -hmm. And I listened to a speaker um, the other day talk about his several near-death experiences. And the first experience when he was seeing, having the life review was about the unfulfilled potential. And 
that is a, a the, uh, I have such a passion to be able to fulfill and, and, and share more widely the gift I was given. So, which would feel like a, um, um, a culmination of this path that I've been on. And yet I understand, and I'm hearing you say that striving cannot accomplish it, can get in the way of it. So how to find the balance between uh, being proactive and taking steps to become more visible and being surrendered and allowing a greater will to take over, finding that balance and, uh, and getting out of my way or getting out of the way for a greater, a greater will is kind of what I'm looking at right now from that place of the, the little I. Yeah, I. I would say that, I would say that, uh, I know this uh, uh, kind of a rude thing to say, but I would say that that's a very greedy uh, objective. Okay. All right. And the reason I say that is because uh, you don't know what's, what your fate is. And, and you don't know, like, you can only do what you can do. And it's got to be that that's enough for you. You see, if that was enough from you, you would, you would be very happy. So if you saw yourself filling your fate or, you know, um, expressing your fate, and that was enough for you, uh, you would have a ticket, a, a ticket to happiness. And if you go beyond that to the point of, of, of wanting things that are, uh, you know, beyond your, your uh, scope, it seems to me you're, you're uh, <laughs> heading for trouble. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's very profound that people um, appreciate uh, what they have, and that's enough, enough for them. I think that's very, very profound. Thank you, Laurel, and thank you, George. Yeah, um, we're, we're at welcome. our time now. So I really want to thank you again, George, for, for sharing with us and thank everybody for jumping on the call. And I know, George, you, Linda, and Elsie have a training that's starting this week. And I believe that there's still some spots available if people want to join virtually. That's yes. Different. Yeah. So I just encourage anyone on this um, call, if you're interested in finding out more about that workshop that's offered this week, you can go on Pransky and Associates website and just look it up there. It's, it's really an incredible trio of George, Pransky, Linda Pransky, and Elsie Spittle getting together. So I'm going to be there virtually, and I'm really looking yeah. forward to it. So I um, encourage you to go there. And also, I'll just um, uh, share that the Soul Centered series, we're getting close to being full. So if you're interested in the program, even if you're not quite ready to sign up, just let me know because I'm having to do a little bit of tracking the numbers because we're doing the virtual track as well as the in-person track and I've limited the size of the program. So I need to kind of keep my eye on who's signing up, what, where, and, and make sure that it doesn't go over the amount that I said it would be. So any communication with me on that front will help that process greatly. So thank you, because that's being done manually. And, and if you have any other questions about it, please feel free to reach out. But George, thank you so much. It's been such a, such a pleasure listening to you. It's a webinar that is certainly worth listening to more than once, I know that. And thanks again. Well, you're certainly uh, welcome, Rini, and it was, it's my pleasure to to uh, to offer what I, whatever little I've, I've offered. Oh, well, it's been a great deal, and I'm going to unmute everybody so they can say goodbye. But thank you, George.